pray. We thank you for today. And we thank you for this platform. Jesus, you are enthroned in the praises of your people. And we give you praise today for all the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Continue to bless us here, we pray. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name we pray. Amen. In the presence of God, wherever you are in your house, give your heart to Jesus this morning. Give your heart in worship as we continue to worship the Lord with His Word today. Wonderful. Ah, hallelujah. What a wonderful time to worship God, to worship Jesus. When you sing, you can imagine that He is there. You are enthroning Him and lifting Him up in your heart, in the congregation, in the church, in your family in your businesses. Oh, hallelujah. Isn't God good? Amen. 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 We go to the Word this morning. So we will continue what we left last week about eternal hope, the helmet of salvation, hope, our hope, the helmet of salvation. So today I try to cover more um, as much as possible today about the helmet um, of salvation. So last week I gave you a long introduction concerning this helmet, you know, the helmet uh, as a protection. Uh, so today I want to go to, uh, you as I promise, an excerpt, but I want to preach from here, an excerpt from this John MacArthur's uh, commentary on the New Testament, uh, especially from the book of Ephesians, because Ephesians 6, 7, they talk about the helmet of salvation, but First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 8, they, they talk about the uh, what is that helmet of salvation? It's the hope that we have. So today I try to cover what is that hope that we have. I explained that to you last week a little bit, all right? But of course, uh, before we continue, we will collect the offering uh, after the service so you can join us in your giving wherever you are. Even though you are not here in church because of the situation that we have, our church is closed for a few weeks until we have a further notice from the authorities whether we can gather and open up the church for the members to come and the public to come. But now we are here as uh, the team, the worship team, uh, to record this uh, preaching, these sermons uh, to encourage you, and also uh, we go uh, live stream through Facebook Live. All right, so praise God. Oh yeah, I forgot. That's why we need a team to remind one another. We have a testimony today. But before that, we will give the offering later on with our tithes. Remember your tithes. Remember your offering unto the Lord. Uh, because the Bible says we need to bring the tithes and offerings into the storehouse of God. Amen? Into the storehouse. Not only tithes, not only offerings, but tithes and offerings. The Bible says in the book of Malachi. So you can join us in giving. Nothing can stop us to give to the Lord, but even though we are not in church, you can uh, yeah, transfer online. Everybody do that today. Okay, so praise God. So we want to bless you, and uh, we pray that God will bless you as you give unto the Lord. Today I'm giving a Thanksgiving offering, not much, but a Thanksgiving offering for my daughter, because my daughter is not feeling well. So we pray last night, I said, God, I will give you an offering by faith for the healing of my daughter. So we believe that we bring breakthrough. So you can give Thanksgiving offering, you can give a faith offering, sacrifice offering, uh, offering of Thanksgiving and all, uh, love offering. You can do whatever offering because the Bible says tithes and offerings is poor. Alright? But I believe God will bless us and He knows how to take care of our life when we give unto Him. Amen. Praise God. So, I cannot go to the Word uh, uh, right now. I give a little bit of introduction of what we are going to say because I promise uh, to give this slot for a testimony today. Alright, so we have here Sister Olive uh, to share with us a testimony how God has worked in her life and also how the Lord has blessed her. Alright, so uh, let's welcome Sister Olive. for the introduction. Shalom brothers and sisters. I just want to thank God 
and pastor to give me this time to share my testimony. All praises to our Lord Jesus for being such a good God and His faithfulness in all time and wherever we are. Uh, hi, I'm Olive. I'm from Slangor. I'm an event manager, manager and I'm working for my husband and I'm a mother of three. I would like to share my testimony about endurance how I overcome it. The challenge that I have to face in my life, that is my work, my family, and also my ministry. For this MCO, before Slangor and Perak was locked down, me and my auntie came down to Perak. So we learned that we have to be a master of endurance. When challenges arise, we have to face it. But how? We can't escape it. This is what I learned. Pray and seek God. God will lead and guide us out. Without noticing it, that we came to know it was have solved the problem. How wonderful is God is. Before that, we use our own way and strength to face the problem. We almost give up. But because of the endurance of God, because of the endurance that we see from our pastor, we face it amazingly by Jesus' grace and love. We have the solution of the, of the problem. When the problem arises again, we're still able to overcome it again without stress. Let me read the word, um, read the book of Romans 5 verse 3 and 4 in ESV. Not only that, not only that, but, but we rejoice of our suffering, knowing that suffering produces endurance, Endur and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. This is what I learned. Because of the experience that me and my auntie, we are so blessed how to overcome the challenges in this CMCO. It is all because of the endurance that I know that how my pastor endures it in every challenges of life. Life will be abundant if we seek God first. Surely that God will lead us out from our problems. I hope that it will be an encouragement that you have to face the endurance of your life. All glory to Jesus for being the way and life to live. Try it and you will like it. <laughs> okay, back to you, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy, for the testimony. Yes, yeah, it, it produces hope in us when we endure. You know, why we can do that? Because of Jesus in our life, all right? And we have a proof here, the evidence of what God has done in a person's life, you know, to be able to endure uh, hardship. Uh, situations that come along in our life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Olive, for sharing that. Praise God. Let's go back to the word this morning. Uh, talk about hope as the helmet of salvation. And we read that in First Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verse 8. Uh, maybe we go there and read that again. First Thessalonians <clears throat> chapter 5. Verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Helmet of salvation. In Ephesians of the um, 6 verse 17, he said the helmet of salvation. Uh, but uh, here he said, what is that helmet of salvation? Is our hope. So the, the salvation becomes our hope that, that, that produces the helmet that, that protects us. Protect us. So I want to go to this, um, think about the, uh, talking about the helmet of salvation, because Ephesians 6, 17, it said the helmet of salvation. Talk about the full armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, right? Faith, <coughs> as the shield of faith. 
saying the belt of truth, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, fit uh, shown with the preparation of the gospel of peace. All of these armor, so one of the armor uh, that we have in our life is this um, salvation, which is our helmet. The helmet protects the head. And Paul, uh, look at that, you know, this study about the helmet of salvation, I mean the armor of God, because when he was in prison, he was watching and looking at these uh, Roman soldiers that was keeping him, that was guarding him. So he has this uh, insights and revelation that and, and looking at these Roman soldiers, a picture of the Christian, the Christian as the soldier of Christ. So we are the soldiers of Jesus Christ. We are the army of God. You are a soldier of Jesus Christ. And as a soldier, you have this full armor that is the heavy equipment actually that we have. The armor that we have, they are the heavy equipments that we have and that is more than enough that we need to live in this life and to face life here on earth and whatever situation that we will go through. Say Amen. amen. Christians, we are in a position as victorious. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't have problems. It doesn't mean we don't have trials and testing and challenges. But God, through Jesus Christ, He has positioned us to be victorious. In Romans chapter 8, He says that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. We are more than conquerors. We are victors. We are victors in Christ Jesus. We, we are not victors. We are not overcomers because uh, we are very clever and you know we, we, we know how to do battle here or we join the army, or we join any battle, or uh, doing protests, or whatever. No. The Bible says, it is not by might, Zechariah 4, verse 6. It is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He was talking to Zerubbabel, the governor, that came back to Jerusalem to build the temple. So he said, it's not by might, not, not by military might, not by power, not by political power, that they can overcome the situation and build the nation again but God said it is by my spirit and why we can be victorious today as believers as Christians it is because of God's grace it is because of the grace that we have received from God through Christ Jesus and he empowered us through the Holy Spirit the working of the Spirit of God in us come on say amen, amen. hallelujah when we talk about victory as in, in a Christian life, it is a victory that has been given to you. And because of that, God has positioned you in that victory. And if you understand that nothing can shake you, nobody can take that away from you. We are victorious, hallelujah, with all the heavy equipments, with all the armor that we have. And one of it is the helmet, that is the hope of salvation and of the, the Roman soldier they will never go to war unless they have the helmet of salvation the helmet is made of you know uh, pieces of iron uh, sometimes of very thick leather why they you know wear this helmet before they go to battle because they will be facing the enemy you know enemy they, they you, in the olden days when they have battles uh, even today you know those who are riding motorbikes, uh, bicycle, you need to have, wear a helmet, you know, just in case you fall down, you know, it protects your head. And that happened to me many years ago when I began in the ministry. Uh, the first place when I was in the ministry, you know, the church sent me to uh, quite a remote place and we had to travel and they gave me a motorbike, you know, a scooter, you know, to go. So I followed the pastor. Uh, it was dark at night. So coming back from that outreach, it was raining and people are doing work in the, uh, on the road, you know, they were uh, doing the road, uh, repairing the road. So it was raining, it was wet, so very muddy and slippery. So the pastor that, that drove me there, you know, that lit, lit the way for me because it was my, my first time, he just, you know, go and just leave me behind him. 
you know, uh, expecting me to catch up with him. I was new in my motorbike. I was new in that area. I was new in that place. So I tried to catch up with him because of the, you know, I don't want to miss him. After that, I will miss the way because I don't know the way. So I tried to catch up with him. So we passed through this road. They were repairing the road. I skidded and fell, actually, you know. But then I woke up quite fast. You know, I, I, I stood up again and rode the bike. Luckily, nothing happened with the motorbike. But then when I was riding the bike again, I, was, I realized, wow, how important the helmet is. Because, you know, I really fell down and knocked my head on the road. I said, wow, that's how important the helmet is. So as Christians, God has given us this, weapon, this armor, you know, this protection, the helmet of salvation. Why this salvation? Why this uh, gift of eternal life is so important for us to know? It's so important for us to understand and to be assured of. Because it protects your head. Alright? It protects your head. So when the Roman soldier or the army go to battle in the olden days, they have this helmet, you know, like you see in the movie. Uh, they have this metal helmet, iron, or sometimes thick uh, leather that they made to protect their head because when they are in battle, you know, there will be uh, what do you call it, arrows flying around, there will be swords, you know, swinging around, so the helmet will protect the head when the sword being swing into their head, sometimes it deflects the sword from, you know, cutting their skull or, or breaking their skull or cutting their head, all right? So sometimes it, it is important Usually in the olden days, their sword is, is quite a long sword, maybe three, four feet long and quite, uh, you know, uh, wide, you know, very, very wide and double-edged sword actually. So they swing left and right, you know, back and forth. So you know, sometimes it is a picture of the attacks of the enemy. It's a picture of the attacks of the enemy today. It's important for you to be assured about your salvation. You can never, as believers, as Christians, you can never experience this protection, this helmet of salvation in your life if you do not understand about your salvation, what Jesus has done for you, and if you are not being assured of your salvation in Christ, that it is a settled issue when you believe in Jesus Christ. The hope of salvation. The anchor of the soul, laid up for you, installed in heaven, kept by the power of God, through the Spirit, in heaven, kept for you. Wow, we have a great promise here. We, when we believe in Christ, we don't live a life in this world as if that we are living an aimless life. Wandering here without hope, without goal, without destiny. Like nothing, wait until you die. Then you will know your destiny. Wait until you die, then you will know which way to go. No, you don't have to wait until you die so that you will know where you will go. Today you can be assured. Today you can know where will you go. You have a choice. God has given us a choice. God, God has given us this life. But we need to choose between life and death. We need to choose between heaven and hell. Because it has been provided. There are two ways in this life. The way of life and the way of death. The way of blessings and the way of curse. The way to heaven and the way to hell. We have a choice to make. Say amen. amen. And we praise God. The good news is that God has done it for us. God has provided for us. He sent Jesus to die for us. And when we choose Jesus, we choose heaven. We don't have to wait until we die that we know. We don't have to be so doubtful that when we die, do we have enough prayers from our family to bring us out of purgatory and go to heaven? We don't have to be doubtful, you know, that our friends, our family will pray for us and give us prayers so that our souls will be saved and go to heaven. Today we can know. Today we can be assured of. Today you can choose heaven. Hallelujah. Usually the, the purpose of the helmet is to protect us from dangerous attack of the swords from the enemy, the flying arrows of the evil one. Hallelujah. Satan likes to come and give a blows in our life. 
You know, salvation or the helmet protects our head. So salvation protects your head. It protects your confidence and your assurance in Christ Jesus. The enemy always attack your mind. Because whatever your eyes see, it affects your mind. And whatever affects your mind, it affects your heart. The devil tries to go into your heart. But before he go into your heart, he go into your mind. That's why many people say that our mind is the battleground of the devil. You know, or, or the playing ground of the enemy. This is where the battle is. Hallelujah. Amen. If you can win the battle here, you can win any battle. Say amen. amen. Even Christian, because Jesus said, You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Winning the battle is not screaming at the devil with your voice until you lose your voice. I see many Christians do that. I have done that before many, many years ago. Screaming at the devil. Every time prayer you have to bind this and bind that and bind it. Every time prayer meeting you have to bind here and bind that and bind it. You, know, you bind the devil today and you get loose tomorrow you pray you bind him again. Next week prayer meeting you bind him again. How can he get loose? Does Christian realize that? Those people who are really in spiritual warfare, do you realize that? That you have been binding Satan for many, many times. You are binding demons for many, many times. No, the battle is here. The battle is in your mind. You need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind with the word. You need to have the word of God in your heart. Because Jesus was very clear when he said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yeah. When you know the truth, as if that you switch on the light in a dark room. So when you switch on the switch, the light comes, darkness flees. When truth comes into your life, you don't even have to tell the devil to go away. He will flee. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I believe that there is warfare. I believe that there is a struggle in the Christian life. I believe that. But I don't believe that we have to bind him all the time. The Bible says resist him. The Bible says rebuke him. Interesting, interesting. I read the Bible again and again and again and again. The more things I see, the more clear things I see. Jesus said, you shall cast out devils. The apostles, they were casting out devils. Paul says, you resist the devil. James said, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit unto God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Peter said in 1 Peter 5, he said, the devil walked about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But he said, resist him, that was in the faith. He did not say, he did not say fight him, steadfast in the faith. He said resist him, steadfast in the faith. It means that the devil will always roaring about. He, he will walk about. The devil will always be there. The demons will always be there. Trials will always be there. Testing will always be there. But our job is to resist them because your position is sure that you are a victorious Christian. Hallelujah. When a mosquito come, you need to resist or slap him. When a bee come, you know, you resist him, you know, you slap them. You don't fight them. Because you are victorious, you are bigger than them. When a dog come charging at you and barking at you, you resist them or you sit down and pick up some stones and throw at him. You are bigger than him. We are bigger. Than all the forces of the enemy because of Jesus Christ. I hope this is a new revelation, new insight, a new understanding to us as Christians. I'm walking in my victory every day. I do resist the devil sometimes when I see some things happen in my life, in my family. I do rebuke him sometimes when he comes. You know, but interestingly in the Bible, when you use the word rebuke, most of the time, not the people of God or the servant of God rebuked the devil. It was the Lord that rebuked the devil. Even the angel does not dare to rebuke the devil. Michael, he said, the Lord rebuked you, Satan. 
In Zechariah chapter 3, the angel that stood uh, by the side of Joshua, when, he, when Zechariah saw the vision, the angel said, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. In the book of Jude, he says, Michael does not dare even to bring a railing accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But today, many people rebuke. Many Christians rebuke. But the Bible says, We cast out devils and demons. The Bible says we resist them steadfast in the faith. So when the pressure comes, when the testing comes, when the enemy comes and pressures you, you resist him steadfastly in the faith. Hallelujah. The battle is in the mind. That's why we need the helmet of salvation. What is that helmet of salvation? We need to be sure of the salvation that we have in Christ. Usually the devil comes and attack your head. Attack this helmet of salvation. Usually he comes with discouragement and doubt. These two things. There's a very simple word. Discouragement and doubt. The devil seeks to discourage you. With all the trials and the testing that we experience in life. The purpose of the enemy is to discourage you. When you have family problem, when you have husband and wife problem, when you have relational problem, the purpose of the devil is, is to discourage you that the husband will give up on his wife. That the husband will say, I am tired of this wife. I think I want to tread in. <laughs> the wife will say, I am tired of him. I am tired of you. We hear this word before, right? What happened? The devil is using this situation to discourage you so that you will give up on each other. And said, you go your way, I go my way. Children, with parents, sometimes children feel that the parents always nagging at them, you know, nagging at them, scold them, and children will give up. And when they come to an age of, uh, you know, Curiosity, and they want independence. They said, I want to go and stay with my friend. I leave the house, I go and stay with somebody and all. Got this courage. Somebody committed suicide here, I think two weeks ago. Took his car and ran inside the factory and almost destroyed the whole office in the factory. Because he got this courage. His money came in there, I don't know what really happened, but it's talking about the, his uh, salary or something. But then after that, he went out of the uh, factory, he walked, and then he was run over by a trailer. He died. So we do not know whether he committed suicide or not, I cannot say. But he died. Just like that. A man who got discouraged and then make a wrong decision. Just took the car and run, you know, destroyed the office, and then end his life like that. The devil wants you to be discouraged. Hallelujah. You know, if you talk about family, I'm a family man, I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes it's hard. So, I give up on fighting, sometimes quarreling, you know. Sometimes things will happen to stir you up. But it's up to you, it's your decision whether you want to continue it, to quarrel, or to fight. But I stop doing that. Sometimes I feel like, boy, oh, it's good to fight. You know, I want to fight. You know, long time, we did never fight. Huh? Long time, never fight. Why not fight, fight now? <laughs> you know, long time, I've not scolded you. Long time, I've not, uh, I've not uh, shouted you. Why not do it now? It feels good sometimes. But I keep up on those things. But it, it, it do good to your heart, it do good to your family. You save a day, you won't spoil your day, you won't spoil your mood. See, the battle is in the mind, discouragement. Remember, discouragement is one of the weapons of the enemy. The devil seeks to discourage you. That's why the helmet of salvation is very, very important. The other one is doubt. The devil wants you to doubt about God's love. To doubt about God's goodness in your life. You know, I think every one of us, you know, experience this. 
that we feel God, where are you? God, are you still good to me? God, do you still love me? Why I don't feel you? That's why the Bible says the just shall live by his faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, not by our feeling, because when you walk by sight, depending on what you see, it affects your emotions. Some people when get when they go to the mall, when they go to the supermarket or go to the mall, their their spirit is lifted up. They feel so joyful. Why? Because of what they see. Everywhere they turn, sale, 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 sell, seventy percent, forty percent, fifty percent, sale, sale, sale. They feel good, and they walk. I'm feeling good. <laughs> Some people going to the mall, they, they have a lifted spirit because of what they see. Every shop they see, every section they see, sail, 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 sail. So they become like birds. Chip, 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 everything chip. Because of what they see. What you see will affect your feeling, will affect your emotions. Hallelujah. That's why sometimes, you know, wife, you need to know how to adorn yourself, clean yourself, tidy yourself. Because when the husband wakes up in the morning and sees his wife, when his wife is ready and not clean and beautiful, well, the husband's spirit will be lifted up. Wow, oh, my beautiful wife. But when the wife, the husband wake up and the wife come out from the kitchen, you know, with all the sticky oil and the hair standing up like that. He said, oh, the husband got a shower. He thought he saw a ghost. When the husband come home from work, he see the wife. It depends how the wife present herself. It's the same thing with the men. You know, sometimes with the men, when they go uh, for courting, you know, interested with a girl, wow. They can finish one bottle of perfume, you know, buy new clothes, you know, everything good, cut the hair and everything very clean. Every time you see the girl, take a shower, put a nice clothing and go. After got married, no more. <laughs> Bow, smelly, don't even change the clothes, don't even take bath. You see, how do we present us? There's like the devil know how to put this doubt in a person's life, in a person's mind. He wants you to doubt about God's goodness, about God's love. He points to you about your weaknesses, your pain, your lack. You are not good enough. He keeps on telling you, you are not good enough, you are not good enough, you are not good enough. He keeps telling you, you, have, you don't have enough. You are not good at this, you are not good at that. He made it to doubt. Does God really love you? If God love you, why you are here in the hospital? If God love you, why you have this sickness? If God love you, why you have this problem? All these voices will come. He put this doubt in your life. So be careful. In every happening in life that produces discouragement and doubt. Don't ever doubt God's goodness. God said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Amen. Therefore, I have drawn you. You love us with an everlasting life. Don't believe your feeling. Sometimes I feel like I have sinned against God. Sometimes I feel I am not clean. Sometimes, you know, I feel like I am a, a, a sinful sinner. But I always remind myself that God loves me. His love for me will never change. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. He is good to me. He is good to me. Maybe I am not good. I am not perfect. But God is good. Amen. Never change. Can never change. So don't believe. Sometimes you have to speak to the devil. Say, devil, you are a liar. God is not bad. God has not stopped loving me. He still loves me. He loves me. Don't believe doubts that the devil put in your mind. This is the word Paul was speaking to the Christians, the, the believers in Ephesus and also in the Thessalonians. This is not talking about the eternal hope or the eternal salvation that we have. 
that we need to be assured of is not for new believers or unbelievers that need to receive Jesus Christ, but these are believers who have believed Jesus. So the believers who have received Jesus, you have already received this salvation, and this salvation has been laid for you in heaven, in store for you, kept by the power of God in heaven. That is your hope. It becomes the helmet. In understanding that, it becomes a helmet to you to protect your head from this discouragement and doubt from the enemy. Hallelujah. Salvation. There are three aspects of the salvation that we have in Christ. So this is not talking about people who yet to receive Jesus, but this is talking about people who have believed in Jesus Christ. So there are three aspects of, uh, of salvation I want to share to you. Number one is the, uh, the word justification. That's the first aspect. When you believe, when you repent, when you believe the gospel, when you believe Jesus Christ in you, you are justified. You repented, you have been baptized into Christ, you receive Him in your life, your life. His blood cleanses you from sin, your salvation has been settled. That is the past. Justification is the past. You become just. He justified you. God justified you. That's, that is the past. Because we talk about the past, the present, and the future. So the past, that is talking about justification. When a person believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. No more condemnation to this person. Romans 8.1 There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Let's read that. Romans chapter 1. Uh, Romans 8 verse 1. Romans 8 verse 1. He said therefore, there is therefore now. He said now. There is therefore now. He talk about now. You are a Christian. Now you are living as a believer. Now you have believed in Jesus Christ. He said now. No condemnation. Now. If a Christian who living now still have condemnation, it means he doesn't understand about the salvation in Christ. And another reason also, he says here, now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 